let's talk about some solutions. Evan, hit us with some what we call apps. Sure. Uh, there's a <laughs> lot of apps that have been uh, created, and they're getting better. Uh, the big problem right now, or before, uh, was these apps didn't know if you were sitting in the driver's seat or in the passenger seat, and so it was really having a, a problem determining you know, when it should be on and when it should be off. However, most recently, uh, there is an app that will determine uh, whether you're in the driver's seat or the passenger seat, and once you're in the driver's seat, it won't work. Now, how does it figure that out? Actually, let me go back just a moment. Uh, the device that Evan is talking about is not uh, an app that you okay. would download on your cell phone. Um, this is an actual device. Um, and this is, uh, it's called Cell Control, and this is a company out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And there are two options, really. Uh, newer cars that run with more sophisticated computer systems, uh, they've got hardware and software that plugs right in and will be installed uh, into the, the vehicle. Um, and <coughs> the other option is, it's like a black box. Uh, everyone's heard of the black box, but it's a small right. black box that gets uh, mounted up on the windshield uh, okay. in, in an inconspicuous area. Um, and what it does is it monitors who's in the driver's seat. Wow. Uh, and it, they're programmed by the account holder. So the account holder in most cases is going to be a parent right. trying to protect their child. Um, but it could actually be an employer. You know, obviously exactly. oh, yeah. employers don't want their employees out on the road texting because if they're, they cause an accident, the employer might be liable as well. I have a vision of the law catching up, and that could be a condition of some kind of plea agreement to absolutely. have one of those installed. Yeah, absolutely. So um, there are a lot of apps, though, too. Every major carrier does have an app. Um, AT&T has something called Drive Mode. Verizon has the Safely Go app. Sprint has the Drive First. Uh, you know, I'm familiar with the Sprint one, and that blocks access to the screen. Uh, as long as the device <coughs> is uh, going more than 10 miles per hour, uh, the calls go to voicemail, and the texts get an auto response, and you can you know, set the auto really? response to I'm driving or something like that. Wow. Yeah, uh, you know, in addition to the major carriers, and you know, it's really you you expect that they would have it. These apps need some work. Um, you know, if you Google them, if you look them up online, the reviews are kind of mixed right now because they're still uh, pretty new. There's still some bugs that need to be worked out. But some of the privately uh, developed apps, um, or independently developed apps, I should say, are are kind of doing a little bit of a better job right now, and they they offer different options to parents and employers. Uh, so, you know, I was looking through some of these, and one that struck me was this V-Hawk. It's V-E-H-A-W-K, and this, what it does is it does exactly what teenagers think uh, their parents are doing. Mom or dad installs this, or employer installs this uh, app on, the, on uh, the phone. It's in child's or employee's pocket when the car hits a certain uh, mile per hour, usually 10 miles an hour. Anytime a text gets sent, there's a notification that gets sent to mom or dad wow. or the employer. So it's a tattletale app. But we're talking about safety here. We're talking about oh, yeah. uh, well, you know, you know, life or death situations. It's interesting. Um, in my nursing home work, we do focus groups all the time. Mm -hmm. And I became very fond of a particular question because in nursing homes, you have to let people have their independence and have their freedom, but you have to protect them because a lot of them cognitively don't know what their limitations are anymore. So I say to my focus groups, you know, you have this balancing act between independence, between freedom and safety. How do you feel about that? Every focus group has said the same thing. They say safety trumps freedom. It's amazing to me. When you, when you talk to non-lawyers, they all feel the same way. Safety always trumps freedom. And I found that really interesting, and I did not expect that answer. Yeah, I guess it's as simple as do you want a more safe world or a less safe world. Right. And, and in this case, you're dealing with automobiles. I mean, the forces that are involved in automobile yeah. accidents, you know, even what people term a minor accident, if you actually look at the frame, I mean, that frame is bent. Yeah. Uh, so people get hurt. People get horribly hurt. Yeah. One of the issues here, and you brought up an interesting point earlier. Uh, when Thank you. you. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, when you compared distracted driving to drunk driving, and, uh, you know, Evan and I do a lot of reading on this topic, and one of the things that you see pretty frequently is uh, a, a criticism, and it's really kind of a societal criticism where um, here's the comparison. If someone confesses to DWI, especially one where someone is injured or, God forbid, killed, right. um, People now look at that as a bad act, meaning morally wrong. Right, right, right. Um, as opposed to just a simple mm -hmm. mistake. People currently look at an admission of driving while texting or, or driving while uh, distracted on a cell phone or, or for any other reason as kind of a slap on the wrist. Well, that was a mistake uh, situation. And that's really just a, a societal shift that's 
going to have to happen, and it's taking place. We're in the middle of that right now. But whereas decades ago, uh, drinking and driving wasn't looked on as with as a great a taboo as it has right well, now. That's such a great point because I opened the show by saying I'm not perfect about it, um, and I'd like to get better. Imagine if I opened the show and I said I, I carry a cocktail while I'm driving, but I don't get that drunk. Exactly. That's really sa- it's, it's really the, the same, same thing. thing. It's yeah. the same thing. Yeah. Exactly. And, and uh, now, how do we change that? Because this part of the show is all about solutions. How well, do we change society's view? You know, of we this? started off talking about the laws, and I think that's the good good place to start. Um, yeah. But ultimately, it comes down to good parenting too. You know, a lot of these offenders are young drivers uh, that are inexperienced, and the parents have to explain to them. Uh, that these people, you know, these other people on the roads, they share the road blades with you, and you've got to be careful. And this is one of the things society needs to do is they need to be considerate of that, and they need to make sure they're safe. Um, so all the apps in the world, you know, they, they help. But really, you know, drivers need to be taught this at an early age.